Hi, welcome to the Market Alert for Monday, the 15th of April, 2024. So um, buckle yourself up. This is going to be a bit of a long one this morning, obviously, because of uh, what's happened over the weekend. But more importantly, to be honest with you, what happened in the markets on Friday with regards to the metals. So I'm going to focus uh, quite a bit on that. So before we get to that, though, let's go through the headlines and the usual stuff. And then we'll focus on that. And I'll show you how uh, the manipulation played out on Friday, which I spoke about in Friday's uh, alert, saying I'm surprised it hadn't turned up and I was only cautiously optimistic. Well, they didn't let me down on Friday, did they? So, but more on that in just a moment. Let's kick off and have a look at the headlines and the stock markets first. So, gold and the dollar surged this week. Stocks and crypto purged as uh, reinflation. Our reflation and World War Three risk rate cut all hopes. And of course, Saturday we saw Iran allegedly uh, send over drones that were taken out by Israel. They always do this at a weekend, and that's because if they don't do the um, the sort of uh, attacks at a weekend, then the S and P would have gapped down three uh, percent quite easily. Uh, had it have been on Friday, it's just uh, this pattern. There is a pattern. If you go back, I mean, I collect all of the news headlines. I keep a journal. I've done now for, uh, I know, 20 years. And every Saturday morning when there's, during the Russia or Ukraine, the news shifts to that uh, area. So there was no surprise as there'd been rumors of uh, Iran um, making an attack on Israel that it turned up on uh, Saturday uh, when the markets are closed. I'm not being a conspiracy theorist. I'm not saying this is just uh, how it works, but it's just so cool. These major news items with regards to war happens over a weekend. Go back to Israel and Palestine weekend. It's just it's just there. Anyway, other news headlines, uh, Iran fear um, and lackluster JPM reports sees market tumble into the weekend. Well, again, it happened, didn't it? Economic news uh, for this week, well, for today, let's start off with that. Uh, core retail sales, Empire State Manufacturing Retail Sales. And to be honest with you, I think uh, there are more important things in the economic news that's going to be out this week. And that's going to be the focus of whether Israel retaliates or not. Uh, Tuesday, we've got claimant count for the UK, average earnings for the UK, then over to building permits for the US. Bailey's going to be speaking at 6 p.m. Um, Barkin's going to be speaking and also... Powell is going to be speaking at 6.15. Wednesday, we get the UK CPI. Bailey speaks again at 5 p.m. And FOMC member Mester speaks on Wednesday. Thursday, on employment claims, the weekly one from the US, Philly Fed Manufacturing Index, existing home sales and retail sales. So no major CPI for the US or non-farm payrolls or FOMC, the ones that move the markets, just the UK uh, CPI numbers out. Their forecast to actually drop by 0.3. Let's see if that uh, happens. Right, let's move on. I'll look at the markets, kick off with the Dow. So in the Dow, the market down once again during Friday for the last uh, three days. We'll see if the market can return to the upside today. Given that there's war going on, there's every likelihood that that will be the case. The market loves the war. Uh, They don't like the speculation of war, which is what you see there on Friday. But once the war starts, they like it because there's uh, contracts to be had, money to be made. So there we see the market down sharply on Friday. What did we see with regards to uh, this move from the high to low? Down to the low of uh, just before the close. Uh, 674 points down there for the Dow. German DAX down but sideways trading down to the low of uh, Thursday, Friday down, but uh, recovering on Monday, early hours of Monday morning there. And there's your move to the upside to begin with. Then we sold off with the Dow and now we're back above the DP and obviously the low and the close as well from Friday. So expect further increases uh, to the upside in these markets unless there is further retaliation by Israel, which probably will be Saturday morning if they're going to do it or overnight when the markets are closed. S&P 500 down and you can see they're also on its way back overnight. Futures moving the markets to the upside. Friday sharply lower and then back up there. The same for the FT100 down on Friday. Not taking out Thursday's low though and then holding and moving back up during the overnight uh, market as well. All of these markets have got to take out the recent high. And in fact, the FTSE is looking stronger than uh, 
all of the others, to be honest with you. It's uh, closest to its all-time high, which uh, we've looked at before, which is that uh, uh, 8,045, isn't it? Which uh, you can see there. So still strong for this market to actually uh, make its way back and get through uh, the high. This high here is 8,016, isn't it, if I recall? Uh, no, that's... Oh, hang on a minute. Did we trade up to it on Friday? I'd miss that one if we did. Yeah. According to this, um, we traded up to the high, the all-time high. But it doesn't show up in that monthly chart, does it? Or does it? No. Something strange going on there, folks. I don't know what it is. And that is the daily chart. And that says 8.045. That must be... Uh, hmm. I don't know what is happening there. But according to uh, the daily chart, uh, that is the case. I will uh, double check that for tomorrow. And then, of course, 30 minute chart, uh, you can see moving back up there as well. Uh, let me just have another look at this. It should be exactly the same there. Let's just drag that over so we can see it. Yeah. And the monthly chart is uh, 45.7. It may be an error in the data. I don't know. I'll confirm it tomorrow and uh, let you know. It isn't quite there anyway. It's uh, 845.5. And in the monthly chart, it's uh, 845.7. Well, a couple of points between anybody. It not make any difference, does it? But there we go. Right, let's um, have a look at the US dollar. US dollar up sharply on Friday, rumour of war, and also uh, ramming the price of the metals, which we'll look at uh, now. So let's start off with silver, absolutely hammered to the downside during Friday. You can see that there, just a complete sell-off. Got the market up to, what was the high during Friday? Uh, 29.78, just within reach of that uh, $30 per ounce, and then it was time to absolutely... Uh, monkey hammer the market so let's have a look at a few headlines shall we so starting off with this one uh, the fed government is trying hard to retain uh, restrain rather the gold price at 3 p.m new york uh, uh, time uh, last thursday there was a 1 billion sale of gold futures in about three minutes right let's have a look at the volumes for silver for friday oh what a surprise we've got 180,000 contracts the highest volume that uh, has been seen for an awful long time. Each contract is 5,000 ounces. That makes it, uh, given the current uh, price at the time, around uh, 1.4 billion ounces of paper silver sold into the market. How much real world physical silver is actually mined each year? Let's have a look. Oh, 1.03 billion ounces. So the whole yearly supply of silver was sold into the market using fraudulent paper, futures contracts, derivatives, gambling instruments into the market to uh, set, get the price down. So again, let me just say that again, 1.03 billion ounces of paper, sorry, physical silver is produced each year or mined. And yet on the Friday, Friday at 3 p.m. when the market started to tank or just before that, there were over 180,000 contracts, well, actually 188,827 sold into the market, the equivalent of 1.4 billion ounces. It's incredible, isn't it? But when you look at uh, this graph here, you can see that uh, silver is actually, the supply of silver is declining, and there's a massive draw on physical silver. So how come when you produce 1.03 billion ounces of silver, per year and there is a decline in the silver holdings and uh, and stocks of physical silver that you can manage to sell a 1 billion 1.4 billion ounces of gold uh, sorry silver futures into the market to get the price down the the manipulation is just blatant so back to silver we see the decline on th uh, friday and overnight, though, interestingly, off the market uh, moved down uh, again, putting in another new low there of, um, what did we get, uh, 2757 for silver overnight, and then it's managed to uh, come back off the low. So we'll see if that demand for the physical that we've seen in the graph, the draw on the uh, silver supply, is actually real. 
and uh, the market should move back up and it'll be interesting to see if it can get back up to these uh, levels and I'll tell you why because if it does it means even with all of their efforts on Friday to pump in 1.4 billion ounces of uh, paper silver um, will be a worthless task going forward and those are big shorts the likes of JP Morgan Bank of America releasing the silver physical silver from uh, JP Morgan will get shafted and uh, rightly so I hope that is going to be the case and gold same thing not amazing volume there on the tick volume but obviously physical we saw over a billion ounces of gold again it's utter nonsense utter utter nonsense and blatant uh, manipulation there 30 minute chart for gold you can see there how they managed to uh, dump into the markets but again coming off the lows and the close uh, there and the gold silver ratio chart is very interesting isn't it you can see on friday how they dropped the market down to uh, a low here if i can find it on the chart yeah it was 81.63 and then uh, overnight uh, silver has found its support uh, you can see that the gold silver ratio is moving back down again but it's you can see how they brought the market back to uh, this uh, support to the left there around the 83 level that we spoke also on uh, friday's um, market alert as well so extra silver strengthening uh, overnight against gold again already so like i say it's going to be a very interesting day to see if that uh, silver price can be brought back and uh, frankly, I hope uh, all of these banks just get shafted and the de physical demand continues to outstrip all of this nonsense and uh, they get their comeuppance because it's been a very, very long time that this market has been undervalued, suppressed and manipulated. Right, so a quick look at uh, Friday's German DAX trades before we conclude. So on Friday, the market was up before in the futures, uh, back up to the high of Thursday. The market then continuing to move higher. We had a potential sell signal, which was filled. However, the market came back and took uh, this out with a loss. It was the only loss on the day. All of the trades produced a profit, uh, as you'll see in a moment. So we had another potential sell. This wasn't filled because the stop was taken out before the order was filled. Prices then traded sideways and then we had another sell signal that wasn't filled again. This time taken out just like the previous one with the stop being hit before the entry. This time the entry is hit and the market finds support at the 50 EMA before bouncing back and finding resistance at the R1 before prices then move down into the mid-morning session. As you can see there back down to the high. Market tries to find support at the high but then continues down to the 200 MA before bouncing back off this level to the high and then getting stuck in a sideways move and then moving back to the uh, upside there. So let's just fast forward. We see the sell off coming as, uh, an hour before the Dow opens, which you'll see now. And that was a massive uh, decline there. You can see uh, 200 points before we even got to 230. We had a bounce back there with a buy signal, market coming back to the DP and uh, just below the close. Then another sell signal that occurred just before the news, the market uh, then trading back up. And another final sell signal there with the market uh, then seeing prices move lower as the Dow uh, also continued lower. Let's have a look at the overnight markets and see where they're trading. So, so far, the uh, German DAX in the two-minute chart is moving back to the upside. I'm just going to compress the chart so you can see the high to the low there. The moment we're around at the DP, as I mentioned earlier, war is good and prices uh, are taking advantage of this at the moment and moving back to the upside there. I'll have to see how this pans out during the rest of the day, though, but at the moment, a bit of strength there. We may get a bit of a sell-off initially at uh, 8 a.m., Purely and simply just to make it look as if, uh, you know, um, there is some sort of reality in these markets. OK, that's it uh, for this one. Like I say, a bit of a long one, but I uh, just wanted to bring those insights to you. Let's see what uh, happens during today. And as ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next.